Good morning. I'm John Deegan. I'm from the Catholic Parliamentary Office, which is an agency of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Scotland. Yes, please. <clears throat> I, think, I think Salad does get to the point that it's, it's a point of the principle is, is, the, is the bigger question. But in terms of uh, the opt-in and the protections, that, that is fair enough. And I think uh, the, the panel earlier were right that there are substantial protections around the celebration. Of, of a ceremony of, of a marriage. Uh, I don't think they will be fully robust. I think that the panel earlier didn't get to the, the, the crux of the matter that a, a religious celebrant is providing a public service. So I think there will be avenues at which that, that could be challenged um, further, further down the line. Uh, I believe that it has happened in, in Denmark, I believe, where a church has been told that they must provide a religious celebrants. So, so I think there will be a challenge there. The broader issue is that this, um, there, there is a, a fundamental philosophical um, clash of opinions here. Uh, there is a view that uh, marriage is just a, a loving relationship between any two people that have committed themselves to each other. And then the, there is a traditional view, which is upheld by the Catholic Church, um, most of Christianity throughout time and most of Western civilization, that marriage actually centers around the fact that we create an environment to ensure that children have parents. That, that's the fundamental difference. We think if we, uh, our, our grave concern is that if we change the law as, as proposed, we will obscure that particular understanding. So it, th this is a question that won't satisfy everyone. We talked earlier that this gives everyone the right option. This is not, this is about how society, not just religions, how all of society understand marriage. Is it something that's about protecting children and ensuring that their parents are bound together in marriage uh, so that they're there to bring up the children? Or is it just a, a relationship between a, a form of, of friendship? We believe it's, it's, the, it's the former of those. And we think for the, the common good of society and for children in particular, we need to state that as a society and, and to protect it. That's about to be lost. Can I bring Mark in on this, please? Sure. Yes, do you have any quantitative evidence that that is the perception of the majority of people in Scotland, that marriage should be for the purposes of procreation, because we do, after all, have Scottish social attitudes evidence that a majority believe that same-sex marriage should be acceptable, so it would seem hard for those to be squared. Well, I think the biggest survey reader, the biggest, um, the, 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 the most profound probing of public opinion was when the government did its consultation and uh, they received 77,000 responses to that. So I think that's, that's way greater than any other survey which typically would use 1,000 people. Uh, that also was engaging people who really thought about it. I think we do live in an age where, and I have this approach myself, we, we, ha we are in a live and let live society. We want to, if people want something, by all means let them have it, if it doesn't impact on the rest of society. So I think from that 77,000 people responded, 64% of those responding within Scotland said that they thought same-sex marriage shouldn't be approved, we shouldn't re redefine marriage. So I, th so I think there is quantitative evidence on our side of that. Um, broader than that, I, I think the issue hasn't been thought through as well. I think the consequences, uh, you know, it's, it's often a, an emotive issue and we don't want people to have hurt feelings and it's often... Uh, it's often a focus on people feel hurt or they feel embarrassed or humiliated because their relationship isn't given a particular status. Uh, we, we believe that we have to have a rational basis about why do we have marriage. It's, it's, you know, there, there's lots of friendships that should always be valued. Every friendship should be valued in society. But why does the state take an interest in that particular relationship between a man and a woman? And we fundamentally believe it's because of the, the procreative capacity of that relationship. That is the only relationship out of which a child can come into the world. And we want to ensure that that child is in the, the right environment. And as the, 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 the UN's Charter on the Right of the Child recognises that um, it should always be the case that the priority is that that child is brought up with its parents. That's what marriage does. It keeps the parents together for the sake of the child. Okay, John. Thank you. Mr Ian, on the, the question of procreative capacity, would you say that marriage isn't appropriate for people who, would, who we would know in advance couldn't conceive children? No, I wouldn't. I, I, I think marriage, saying that marriage um, is the, the environment in which procreation takes place isn't the same as saying that we only have marriage for that reason. Uh, I think recognising the... I mean, typically, or traditionally, uh, throughout society, we've recognised three ends of marriage. We've recognised that the 
you know, it's, it is built in love. The, the couple definitely love each other, but uh, for mutual comfort of the, the couple themselves, so they are attracted to each other. Uh, they have the capacity to have children, and the common good of society is aided by having that stable foundation for, for family life. That's, that's the three ends of marriage. Now, sometimes uh, those three do not always attain. So in the case of there are some people who just c cannot, uh, cannot have children. And uh, we certainly put a lot of effort into society to try and help them. You know, we do have adoption services, and there's even um, a, quite a, an emphasis just now on fertility service. So we, we, we try to... Um, ensure that environment is is adequately understood and protected, but um, we're not saying that anyone who can't have children isn't capable of entering that uh, that relationship. But that's the that's the archetypal model of what a marriage is. It has always, throughout history, regardless of the changes, that is the inherent essence that makes it marriage. The fact that there's a complementarity between a man and a woman. The proposals before uh, this committee are that. Um, a man and a woman don't matter. It's just they're completely interchangeable. We don't think that the reason supports that position. If I noted you correctly, and I, I may sure. not have, but uh, forgive me if I have, um, I, I noted you saying you, uh, the purpose of marriage was to create an environment to ensure children have parents. Yeah. And for you, parents is two people, one man, one woman. It couldn't be any other combination. Well, well, well biologically, we know that a parent is a, a, a mother and a father. Yes, that's, that's, what, that's what parents are, yeah. yeah. Mr. Just a couple of points to um, Mr. Biagi's point on the, the protections. I think the, the trouble with if you want to use the, uh, the ECHR to protect you is it costs you a lot of money to do it. It costs you a few hundred thousand pounds to go to that level. The Faculty of Advocates made an interesting submission um, to the government's consultation and they pointed out, without taking a position on, on the principle, that the the difficulty which will lead to a, which will definitely lead to a, to a conflict is the Equality Acts section 149 which gives it uh, the public sector equality duty so what we will have is so this isn't just about a re-understanding of, of marriage and society but it's also about bringing down the weight of the state on enforcing that particular understanding and they will do that through the public sector equality duty so that there is a there's a real uh, considerable considerable threat Terms, bringing down the weight of the state. What, so, what for example, if, well, if, if you're employed in the public sector, uh, you, you will be told, and I think we heard that earlier in the evidence, for, for example, if you're a teacher, that you will have to uh, promote that particular understanding of marriage that the, the state is, is telling you. The public sector equality duty uh, points that out. So, for example, in, in England, we've already had teachers um, being given advice by the Equality and Human Rights Commission that to show they've satisfied the public sector equality duty, they have to implement LGBT History Month. Now, that would be a particular uh, month of education which would conflict, uh, especially in Catholic schools. And I think uh, uh, th there are immediate concerns uh, for us in that regard. Why would LGBT History Month conflict with that? Because the, the whole aim of the month is to, choose, is to try and change people's understanding of um, people who are homosexual and propose them as role models. So we wouldn't want to be doing that. I'm sorry, I thought the, under, the, the purpose of the month was to show that there have been gay people through history. That, that presumably is something. Well, our, our problem is with, with the accuracy of who those, those people are. That's just one particular initiative. Now, they're choosing people with the, the flimsy of evidence. Florence Nightingale, for example, or, or even there's a pope, I think, is used in, in one of their days. Uh, but that's just an example. So it's, you're creating the environment where you're trying to propose as positive examples. Uh, and I, I think that's where the challenge to us is. This is where the, the conflict will be when we want to propose our own mm -hmm. understanding of sexual relationships. Now, I think in terms of the progressive nature of this, I think it's quite clear that it's, it's been progressive. It's been quite a, a quick progression since the creation of the, the Scottish Parliament. That, that progression, I think, that perhaps the, the, the committee would like to examine uh, the principle that you're establishing. If we support this bill, you are saying that men and women are interchangeable and therefore gender really doesn't matter in any uh, field of life. And that is an area w which could easily be progressed. I think in some of the evidence and some of the discussion round about this issue, uh, where believing that marriage is intrinsically and by essence um, built around the complementarity of male and female, 
that has been paralleled to uh, segregation, we heard earlier. It's been paralleled to the, the civil rights movement against racism. So I think if there's going to be a progression, that's where you've got to look. That's the principles that are being established just now. If you hold that view, that's the way you have to be perceived in society. And that is what ties in with this public sector equality duty. If that is the mindset of those who are proposing this, the, the Equality and Human Rights Commission, for example, and I've been at a presentation where they do this, say there is terrible discrimination in Scotland because there are some people who believe that sex only belongs within marriage between a man and a woman. Now, what that is saying is that it's unacceptable to have traditional Christian beliefs, traditional Muslim beliefs, traditional beliefs of Judaism in our society. It does, it is not, this is not leading to pluralism. It's leading to the, the, the victory of a, a complete redefinition and an enforcement of that redefinition on all of society? I, I, I don't doubt your sincere belief that the way you conceptualise marriage, and I un understand as well that the Catholic Church has different views to other denominations on aspects of marriage, for example, the acceptability of divorce. Now, you at present, as a, as a denomination, are entirely able to practice that individual definition on divorce, just as this bill aims to allow you to continue exactly as you're, as you're going at the moment. What I fail to understand is why you appear to be un, uh, unsupportive of granting the same right to all the faiths, including those in particular who wish to perform same-sex marriages, to practice their faiths as they see fit. Because I can understand you have the concern about slippery slope, but I also hear from you an objection to allowing anyone, including the state, to perform same-sex marriage. I'm, I'm glad you raised that because it's a, it's a, I think it's a crucial point that the, the committee might want to reflect on. When, when we understand religious freedom, it's the freedom of any individual within society to pursue their particular religious beliefs. Now, if you then conflate that with the idea that the state must endorse that, you're actually not talking about religious freedom, you're actually talking about theocracy. Now, what society, what the state needs to do just now is have a, a rational reflection on what is the purpose of marriage. Why does the state take an interest in it? If it's just about friendship, then there's a, a myriad of friendships in society and we don't feel, we wouldn't want the state to be, to be interfering in those friendships. If there is a practical implication, and that is that children are born and we want to make sure that those who have th that child uh, have it in a responsible manner and raise that child and they're more likely to do that if they are bound together in marriage and that child is more likely to benefit from the attention of their parents if the, uh, the, the child lives with the parents. That is, that is why the state has an interest in marriage. It's not about friendship, it's not about feelings. Um, those are all, all important but we, we don't um, change the whole of society because people might feel up, upset that their relationship isn't being given a particular badge by the state. It's not about badges, it's about the practical effect on, ch on children. The threat, uh, sorry, the threat is the quality, it's the context in which this bill is coming in. It's the exact same parallel to, to adoption. So all I would say to the committee is please don't make the same uh, mistake that your colleagues before when they told us that we had nothing to fear from adoption whatsoever. And I think that we have the quote in, in our evidence. It was the context. The context was that once you establish a particular criteria, the, the, the Equality Act enforces that on your religion. And that we suffered that with our adoption agencies. We would suffer the same if it came to marriage counselling, marriage preparation, marriage training, all of those things. Um, small Christian organisations that want to retain a belief that marriage is only between a man and a woman, they would all come under the same problems with the provision of services. And th that fact that um, a celebrant just now um, is providing a public function. And if from the evidence we heard earlier, they don't want any public function done by those who are not willing to conform to this, the, the new understanding of, of marriage. And, uh, so I think what you'd have to do is get a change in the Equality Act, one that gives accommodation. The accommodation that's lacking in the Equality Act is that it does not allow people to distinguish between two things, that being sexual orientation and the practice of, of the sexual behaviour. Th those two things are conflated. So it means that, for example, I, I think it's, it's wrong to discriminate in any way against someone based on sexual orientation uh, in, in an unjust manner. It's wrong to do that. But So, for example, you could have someone uh, working in a, a Christian organisation with a particular sexual orientation, but then if they wanted to 
um, and propose their lifestyle of living in a same-sex relationship to children who they were per perhaps uh, trying to instill a, a Christian uh, education with. If they then propose that, that, that's two different things, but the Equality Act doesn't allow us to distinguish between the two. That is the context which gives us the threat. The Equality Act has extensive, specific exemptions for religious organisations on the grounds of sexual orientation, which are actually being expanded on where they are at the moment. And can you point to any ruling under the public equality, public sector equality duty in court thus far that would lead to this but, situation? In, in, the Liddell, in the Liddell case, for example, Lillian Liddell was told that because she can get to church on a Sunday, her religious freedom was not being uh, infringed. Now, that's a very narrow understanding of, of religious freedom. And if, she was correct a registrar, me if I'm yeah. wrong, she was a civil registrar in yeah. London who refused to perform civil yeah. partnerships, took her case to Europe and lost yeah. because she was exercising a civil function in a civil yeah. situation yeah. rather than a religious function, which is where the crux but of But what, what I'm saying to you is the, the very, it was Neuberger in, in the, the UK uh, Supreme Court who said it was her, um, her religious freedom was not being infringed. Now, the European Court said that they couldn't, they couldn't dismiss it as, as easily as that in, in, in the judgment. Uh, but what we're looking at is a very narrow understanding of religious freedom. The, the St. Margaret's Adoption Agency is, is the perfect example. If, if we have no problem whatsoever, why are they facing closure? Can and let's, the, the same protections that we, we asked for at the time then would be the same protections that would be needed now. But um, the, the, the context is too dangerous to introduce same-sex marriage here because people who disagree will find massive detriments throughout every area of, of society, especially if they work for the public sector. Thank you, um, Mr. Deacon. Well, on, on principle, we already have equal marriage. All people do have the right to marriage. Um, marriage is a particular thing. But what we're doing now is we're making a, an arbitrary change to it. Now, if you, if you, if, once you bring in arbitrariness to, to uh, the legal system, then it, all sorts of change are possible. So, so you're then thinking about how are you going to protect yourself against all those things that could happen. Uh, there was a case, the German case of Stubing last year was taken to the Equality and Human Rights, uh, sorry, the, uh, the Strasbourg Court um, under the ECHR. And it was a, a, a brother and a sister demanding that they were allowed to marry. Now, if, if we are setting up a principle here that marriage is only about love, you've got to ask yourself, well, what is the principle that says that that's, that's not permitted? Uh, the, the, the state authorities recognised that their love was sincere, that they did have a loving relationship. Uh, they had four children together, uh, but they failed, uh, they, they failed thankfully, uh, for the sake of the marriages of everyone else in society. We have a right, the state has a right to protect marriage as it's understood. So in principle, uh, we shouldn't be making arbitrary changes um, to marriage because it affects all of children and start speaking, speak to uh, paediatricians and, and local services and ask them the devastating impact that family fragmentation is having on children. Uh, in the last eight years, the number of children under one being taken into care has trebled. Um, what paediatricians, certainly ones I've spoken to, are saying 30 years ago, we started to see a rise in the number of children born outside of marriage. Um, so losing the bond with their mother and their father. We're now, 30 years later, we're at the point where they're at second generation family fragmentation, and that will be devastating because you don't have grandparents to step in where the, the, the parents have, have separated from, from the child. In terms of particular, uh, we believe there will be detriments to people in terms of their belief. Um, and the court, uh, so it's stating your belief. Um, so employment laws would have to be amended because you, your employer could say, well, we don't think you weigh up to the, the latest standard in, in, on equality because of your beliefs in marriage. We've, we've heard that some people already think they're akin to racist beliefs. Um, freedom of, of expression and education. I mean, I, I would make a plea that you listen to a, a Catholic education service of the Bishops' Conference. They have particular um, expertise in, in knowing how they could... Um, robustly, I suppose, uh, pr protect their right to pass on the Catholic faith to children 
uh, whose parents have opted to place their children in, in, in Catholic schools. The quality duty certainly uh, would have to be changed so that people working in the public sector do not feel that they have to promote a, a, a value that's, that's at odds with their belief. I've already had this, people phoning my office saying that they have been told to implement diversity training schemes within the, the, the places of work, but those schemes are, are they're created in such a way that they stigmatise people who disagree on their understanding of marriage. That's, that's the sort of breadth uh, of detriment that we're facing in society if we go ahead with this. I think I agree with the, the thing. Uh, marriage uh, is a natural institution. It arises naturally from the, the first social grouping is between a man and a woman. They have children. That's, that, that's the foundation of society. And that's why we believe it's so important that you, you, don't, you don't mess about with the, the foundations of your society. The state has a role in um, legislating on the civil effects of marriage, but not on its essence. It can't, you know, we can't have laws saying that we're deciding that people can sell bracelets and call them watches if they don't tell the time. You know, we had, there is an essence, there's something that makes it marriage, and that is that there is a, a, a man and woman uh, at the heart of it, and that is the relationship that, that gives rise to children. So, so you see it as an exact science, no scope for differences of opinion within the, the view? I, I, th I think there's, a, there's an essence there. That the, the state doesn't have the right to, to, to recreate what is a natural institution. No, the, the state exists to uphold the common good. Not to not to re-engineer new foundations for what it thinks could be the common good. Say that I don't believe the church can redefine marriage either. I think we can we can all comment on it and discuss it and try to understand it. But it's a natural institution that precedes the church as well as it precedes any other institution in society. Yeah. Thank you. I I think we are quite protected under um, uh, UK law just now. If, if you, if, except on the on the basis of providing the public service, you won't be you won't be safe under that. Um, it, it's just new, as you say, nine countries. There's 193 countries in the world. We've got a long way to go. If we, uh, Denmark, Denmark, you, however, has, has your uh, been compelled the Catholic same Church sex marriage in any of the the countries that have introduced same sex. The Catholic marriage. Church hasn't, no. Okay, that's but we have had an adoption agency closed. Uh, well, closed all over the UK from equality laws, and it's the equality law context which poses the difficulty once you change the understanding of, of, of marriage. And I, th I think also the sentiment behind it as well, I mean, you heard the evidence this morning, um, the Equality Network does align people who disagree on their understanding of marriage. They, they called the practice today segregation. They also said that people uh, were akin to, to making uh, a ban on same-sex marriage as a ban on interracial marriage. So I, th I think that sentiment has to, has to worry us if, if that's if, if you do believe in plurality, and there are yeah. there are other organisations who have made very strong attacks on on marriage and and, and threats. Thank for the clarification. That you Can I thank everyone, the witnesses, for coming? This will actually now conclude the public part of our meeting. Thanks very much again for everyone for coming along. It's been very interesting. Our next meeting will take place on Thursday, the 12th of September, and will include further oral evidence on the Marriage and Civil Partnership Scotland Bill. And we will suspend briefly to allow the witnesses to leave. Thank you.